I don't walk trusses for the good of my health. That's yeah, not looking too uh, bad, though. I do a lot of pre-build, but sometimes you have to come up. So yeah, usually, usually I walk around all over with these. I don't have any discomfort with heights or. Well, the wasps are kind of annoying, but. I can truck all over this pitch of a roof without any trouble at all. But sometimes, sometimes, sometimes folks, when I'm up in the trusses, I get tired of walking around and I need to rest. So I pin my foot against the truss like that and I rest my knees on top and I put my weight on the truss, but I can just barely reach to the truss behind. They're two feet apart. So it's, it's enough to get one foot braced and one sitting on and then I'm sort of stable. Okay, so as for the whys and what fors, the reason why I do have to go up here before I sheet is to do all the framing. This hip hip is a technical term for the pitch break and whatnot. They, these don't frame themselves, so that's my job. That's what, why we have framers. And since framers are always conscious of eliminating footsteps and therefore saving precious time, I try to assemble as much of the roof as I can on the ground. Putting hangers on beams and connecting many trusses into manageable pieces, then adding lateral bracing, bottom cord straps, uh, some blocking and some sway bracing, make it safe to hoist. Of course, there's a lot of precision uh, layout needed to get a big roof like this to fit just perfect but time invested here is certainly not time wasted when you fly up a roof like this and everything fits and at the end of a you know half a day of craning you can walk away going wow that's that's cool that's done but in reality that's when the start of the real roof framing comes in hanging fascia the lateral bracing hips and valleys, ridge blocks, gables, tray ceilings, drywall backing, piles of blocking are installed to prepare for the sheathing. And then, with the start of the sheeting marks the end of the walking trusses, and sheeting itself goes very quickly. It always gets a lot of smiles and back padding, although notably is the easiest and maybe the most fun part of framing a house, it certainly has great curb appeal. Here you can see the bulkheads I have built and the columns that are waiting patiently for me to frame them out to size. At this stage, the bulk of my job is done, but for the tedious details and window installing, which is heavy. So this might not be the same everywhere, but in my area, framers install the windows. We also have many responsibilities like installing stairs, cutting heating holes, cabinet backing, and things like that. For those of you interested, this front door here is a temporary construction lockup door. It'll be replaced at the end of the job. Many of the doors and windows here were many hundreds of pounds, and so I enlisted the help of a fellow framer and his zoom boom to install the highest ones, and just rallied up the troops for the rest. So I hope this video answered the questions why and how a framer walks trusses, and if you learn anything or if you like this video I hope I've earned your thumbs up please share and subscribe to Jer Walls for more content like this in the future thank you guys so much for watching